this little thing, it's uh, it means more than you think it does. Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie and I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here on the channel. If you caught the video yesterday, I opened up or I said I was gonna open up uh, a bunch of these enduring enchantments uh, and Planeswalker party decks. As a store, I had a plethora of those two decks and a lot of the other ones, the Slivers and the Eldrazi had sold and I had a, a problem to solve. Uh, and so I shared with you that the solution was to crack them open for singles, which worked really well just on the singles front uh, compared to selling the, the sealed decks or whatever. So I did that. And then today I was just baffled as I opened those 35, you know, two little collector sample packs. I was baffled by the incredible value that is inside those little sample packs. So today I thought it would be a good dialogue and good conversation to give you some of that info, but then go forward and speculate a little bit on what that means for the longevity of the commander decks that do include those and what it means when it's connected to that set. So I hope you'll join with me while we sit down and talk about that. So let's get to the brass taxes, right? What were the numbers of my 35 sample collector pack opening? And it was crazy, $250 in value, actually a little bit more than $250 in value of singles that I listed on my TCG player account as a result of opening up those 35 decks, which calculates out to about $7 and 50 cents in, in additional value onto each one of those commander decks. Now, to you, $7.50 might not seem that much. And uh, first I wanna focus on the store perspective of this for you. Uh, and then we'll get into like the consumer type of stuff. But as a store, seven and a half dollars, seven dollars fifty cents is 13 and a half percent of my cost for that product, which is, outstanding. It's like getting the product at a, you know, a 13% discount. It, it is a really, really, really big win. And I understand it, it, you have to open these in more volume, you know, one or two packs you can miss. But when you open this stuff on a large scale, that's a significant amount of additional value that these, th those cards, that little pack adds to, to these decks. Um, and so for me, from my perspective, this was a home run. It, it, it really boosted this up to be like, this is even more worth it. I even told my, my, one of my um, employees, one of the guys who helps ship cards, I was like, hey, we should just do this for every set. We should be opening a ton of these because it, it is so good. It is so good. Um, and so that was a huge win. I think um, as a store, I'm going to start looking at that. And especially Lord of the Rings, which, I mean, we did this for Lord of the Rings. We opened like, I think we opened 80 commander decks for Lord of the Rings. Um, it was before anybody really understood what was in the collector packs. And we didn't really even gather that the cards we were pulling were so rare. Luckily, we didn't hit the, you know, the, the big rings or anything like that. Um, but we actually ended up giving away a lot of the cards, I think, to people locally, thinking that they were the lower value cards because TCG player didn't even have them in their system from the special card. So this is just talking about the, you know, really the commander master one, but the Lord of the Rings, I mean, that's going to be insane. And those things are absolutely crazy. The little sample pack and that, uh, and that kind of stuff is wild when they do special cards in that little sample pack. Like in this, it's not special cards. It's the same cards you're getting everywhere, right? They're borderless or foil or whatever. Um, and so, Man, those Lord of the Rings ones, if they continue to do it like that, this, everything I'm saying is just expedited and, and extremely better. Um, so yeah, from a store perspective, it's a, it's a huge hit. It's a home run. It's a win from that perspective. But now I want to transition and talk about the consumer perspective. I've always been a, a fan of collecting uh, the, the decks. Like I, I picked up this uh, 2017 set a couple months ago. Uh, in a trade. I missed out on that. I wasn't playing Commander back then. I don't remember what I was doing in my life, but I was busy. And, and I started collecting the Commander decks at like 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And then like 2022 happened and they started putting out all of these Commander decks. Just like, it seems like every day there's a new Commander deck and it's like, it stopped being special. So I stopped collecting it. And I stopped investing it because, you know, the prices of them tanked all the time and it just wasn't a win. It just wasn't, it just didn't feel special and didn't feel important. But now I'm starting to get a little bit more interested in them. Um, this edition of the collector pack, 
the sample collector pack, in my mind, opens up, again, especially on Lord of the Rings, where there are cards that are only in those decks, but really, are only in those packs. Really, all of them, though. It opens up the door to looking at commander decks, not just as a, uh, a mutual index fund of all the commander cards that are good. And, and, you know, typically, you know, especially back here, you had some really great commanders that are now commander staples, cards that have been utilized in commander now for five years, um, whatever it is, six years, well, I'm old. Um, but as you get commander decks, you're getting high powered cards from the set, which are a big win. But now you get this added little bonus of these randomized higher, potentially higher value. Again, I pulled a demonic tutor from one of the sample packs in here, a $41 demonic tutor from one of the, the little sample packs in here. You're getting this additional value in the potential, the gambler's premium of the potential of getting a really good card from the set as well that's not included in the commander decks. And man, I just think as a collector investor, somebody who, who thinks through that stuff, that opens up the door. I'm not saying to do this for every single set. I'm not saying that the Wilds of Eldraine ones are great. You know, frankly, like the Wilds of Eldraine ones probably don't have the, the best cards, the, the enchantments that are in Wilds of Eldraine. So that's probably not the target. But these sets that do have high-end singles within the set, these commander decks add a, another element too. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I had a, a home run of a success, I feel, in that as a store, and it led me to kind of this dialogue of, as a consumer, are we getting back to this idea that maybe things are getting a little bit more special with that inclusion of the sample pack? So I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section. Hopefully you have yourself a great day. Uh, remember to be kind to the people around you, and we'll see you again next video.